Well, welcome back to our Time Out Tuesday podcast here at Hopevale. I am Josh Party, Senior Pastor, and today we are continuing on this podcast series. We are entitling it Telling Her Story, exploring the incredible stories of women in the Bible and also in our church today. And so what we've been doing in this series is we've been going through and being introduced some to some incredible humans, uh, some involved in our church today and some that were in the Bible uh, years and years ago. But what we're doing is we're, we're getting to hear their story and we're having space for them to tell their story and it's impacting us. We're getting to, to hear how God has been at work uh, through some incredible women uh, back in the day and also today. And so we're gonna continue that uh, today. And today I have on uh, the podcast with me, Autumn Reef. How are you doing today, Autumn? I'm good. How are you? I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. It's good, yeah. good to have you here. So, yeah. So let's let's uh, get to know Autumn a little bit. Tell tell me about um, how did you get involved at Hope Vale and how long you've been involved at Hope Vale. And mm -hmm. I'll I'll just start shooting some questions for you after that. Okay. So. All right. Um. So my husband and I have been coming to Hope Vale, um, since the fall of 2018. It was kind of when we were like new into our relationship, and um, I was a new believer at the time. So. So I was just hungry for the Lord mm. in any way I could be. And so he, um, it was a little bit different, hopefully it was a little different than what he grew up with. So I knew that I wanted to find a new church for us to kind of grow into together mm. um, and kind of prepare us for marriage at the time. So um, I just said, hey, that really big church on the corner looks really cool. <laughs> like, can we please go there sometime? So we went and immediately... Hopevale made us feel like we were at home. Mm. Um, so we've kind of been dedicated here ever since. And um, we had a period um, in the last few years where we actually went traveling and lived around the country for my job. Um, and we were still kind of tuning into Hopevale online as much as we could. Um, and we were kind of looking to see like where God was leading us in life and, and didn't know if that meant coming back to this area or not. Um, but ultimately, while we were away, we felt um, like we were called to come back here. Hmm. And I think that Hopevale was probably a really big part of that and hmm. how... Um, just like safe that we felt to like grow in our faith here. And um, we just felt really at home. Hmm. Um, so we've been coming here since then. And since we've been back in town after we're done traveling now, um, I recently joined the missions advisory team too. So that's been very exciting. Missions is something that's like um, very important on my heart yeah. too, to, um, you were you were on a mission trip that yes. we did back in the fall, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we went to the Philippines and Thailand. Yeah. That was amazing, amazing. Mm. I love. There's just something so special about being able to go to a different culture and different place of the world and like see how God is still moving, you mm. know, over there. So. Yeah, well, that's awesome. So, really uh, so 2018, you've mm -hmm. been involved and you serve in missions on our missions team. Mm -hmm. uh, any other areas you're a part of currently have been a part of? Um, at Hova, I joined a Bible study recently. Oh, nice. Too. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Um, and then tell us a little bit just about uh, who you are. What, what do you mm -hmm. like doing with your life? Mm -hmm. uh, what are hobbies, interests? I, I believe I've seen on social media you're a runner. Is I that... am a runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think if I'm recalling, like I'll see, you know, fairly. In, do you run early in the morning I or do. something? Yeah. yeah. So your your people, people like you, always make me feel a little bad about myself because <laughs> oh, no. because I'll see I'll, I'll like look at social media in the morning and you know I'm just getting my day started and it's like you or whoever i have i have multiple friends who do this right and they'll post like well just ran 20 miles ready for my day to start <laughs> oh, yeah. and i'm like oh my goodness you people uh, i can't keep up with you <laughs> oh that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> i love that um well yeah i guess i am a runner and that's like a new thing in my life in the past couple of years okay. um and and it's funny because i was always the kid in, in high school gym doing anything i I could do to get out of running. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Here I am running. Yeah. I, so I'm currently training for my second marathon. Um, that'll be in the spring. Um, That's awesome. I also like to travel and I'm a nurse too. That's yeah. what I do for work. And very cool. That's kind of all there is to me. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, some maybe 
moments in your life where there's just been spiritual impact? Like mm -hmm. what have been some events that have happened in your life or some voices that have been really important to you? So you're, you're a, a new believer early on in 2018, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, you know, five and a half, six years into that journey. Mm -hmm. um, what have what has been some moments where God's just been at stirring in your life and revealing himself and and growing you? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, really just the way I kind of came to know the Lord too. Uh, you know, back in 2018, I was a newer believer at the time. Um, fast or back up a couple years prior to that, I had a friend, a random friend in college who um, had invited me on a mission trip. And I said, oh boy, like, I don't know anything about Jesus, but like, I like to help people. Like, okay. sure, let's yeah. go. I mean, you're a nurse by profession, uh, yeah. right? So you kind of inclined towards mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And so I said yes. And I went on this trip and we went down to Guatemala and we served for a week. And I just remember like my eyes were just like popped right open. Like hmm. I just, I couldn't get enough of like, who these people were talking about Jesus and like what he had done for them. Mm. And I just the different way of life that they lived there, you know, and um, of how no matter what they were going through, their struggles or any other testimonies, like they still relied on God and Jesus as their foundation. And, and I, so after that, I was like, well, this has got to be something, mm. you know? So ever since then, I think God has just been, working on my heart and, um, you know, I didn't really realize it at the time, but, um, preparing my heart probably cause a few months after I came back from that first trip, my stepfather had passed away mm. very unexpectedly. Mm. And I felt like I was able to kind of grieve that mm. in a much more peaceful sense than mm. I probably would have before. So, sure. um, I just am so grateful for a friend, you know, seeing it in me that she wanted to invite me on a trip like that. And my life has been totally changed since. Wow. So that's awesome. Uh, probably speaks even to, um, so you're, you're a part of our missions team here, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, missions is important for so many reasons. We're all invited mm -hmm. into God's mission to participate in what he's doing across the globe. But yeah. also that's, it sounds like how he kind of got a hold of you in your mm -hmm. life, you know? Mm -hmm. So then you have a little personal experience. Mm -hmm. with that as well that's yeah. that's really cool mm -hmm. okay uh so anything as far as um <clears throat> so so a big moment is just serving and and being a part of missions and mm -hmm. um helping others do you have you ever taken any like spiritual gifts assessments at all um i no? have actually yeah. um my spiritual gift i think was actually just faith okay um and i i get that at first i was like Oh, kind of caught off guard by it. But I think that um, it makes sense because even though like I was like a newer believer in my 20s, like I don't have all the knowledge of anything, but I have the faith and I know mm. what the Lord is doing for me, you know? So yeah, I think that's, that's that awesome. my gift. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's, mm -hmm. I, I, I think um, I, I love hearing that. And I, one of the things I love about the body of Christ, right, is how we're all different and like mm -hmm. some of the different skills and gifts that we bring because i'm i'm usually working that the opposite way mm -hmm. like i have to get my head to my heart <laughs> yeah. like like to get yeah. to my to get to my heart I, a lot of times i have to go through my head and try and sure. understand yeah. and like be able to reason and try and figure out how to get there so um and and so people like you uh, my wife is kind of that way too where there's just moments where she's just like well this is this is what it is and i'm mm -hmm. like how can you say that like well, i have to go <laughs> you know read 15 books before i can get to that point so right, right, but there's right. some there's some like good work that happens yeah. there too right of yeah. just being able to step out in faith when you're confident of what is of the lord like that's edifying to mm -hmm. for yourself for sure but then for me and the rest of the body and all that sort of stuff so yeah yeah that's awesome that's awesome. Very cool. Um, all right. Any, anything else as far as, uh, your story, like big impactful moments that you've journeyed with God in, uh, that have been, um, you know, uh, yeah. challenging seasons for you or oh, different yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a couple years ago, um, I was, uh, 27 at the time and, um, 
I was actually diagnosed with um, breast cancer. Mm. And um, my family was already kind of going through a lot of other health problems um, at the time. And so um, I... (laughs) I'll never forget like the the process of how I was I found out and um you know I got the news and I kept it to myself. Mm. I didn't say it to anyone. I just held it in my heart and I asked God, "What are you doing to me?" Mm. And I kept this in for about three days or so. And I just wrestled with God. And I said, I have so much going on. You know, this just feels like one more weight on top of everything. And I I can't see what you're doing with this. Mm. And I cried and I was, I was mad. Mm. And it hurt me to be mad at God, I think. Mm. Um, But I wrestled and prayed and prayed and prayed. And by the third day, God gave me this overwhelming peace that just projected me into like a good, I don't want to say good, but like an okay journey with it. Mm. And by that third day, I just had a peace where I felt like I knew whatever he was going to do with that and however my journey was going to look like, I knew that he would bring me on the other side of it because Mm. he's not a God who would um, bring me to something and not through it. You know, and I know that he is faithful and I could see all the other things that he had done in my life without even me me knowing him at the time. Um, So I knew he was going to get me through this. And so that peace gave me um, like the strength to be able to tell my family Hmm. and um, and then just like dive right into what this journey was Hmm. and. I felt like I was able to use it to actually speak the Lord's name into other people's lives, Mm. you know, because I've met so many people in the process of that, whether it was other women going through the same thing or my nurses or just kind of sharing my journey of it. I was able to kind of speak praise about God and Mm. how there's no, I didn't have to worry. And, and he did. Mm. And about, um, a few months I had a couple surgeries and, you know, he got me through all that and I'm healthy now and I'm mm. cancer free and wow. I am on the other side of that. So, yeah. Wow. Um, so as you're going through that journey, yeah. um, you're, you're mad at God. It sounded like for a few days, so was it just mm-hmm. those few days and was, then you make the transition it or was, was it a few yeah. months or no, it was three days. I was three mad. days. That's, that's pretty fast. Honestly. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it didn't feel fast Mm-mm. when you're walking through it, but, um, I mean, some of us will walk through things and it, it takes us months or years mm-hmm. to get through it, mm-hmm. but let's talk about that a little bit. So you, you know, you're, you're delivered some devastating news. I assume mm-hmm. that feels like some bad news. Um, and then you're, you're interacting with God. What, what does that look like as far as being mad with him? Mm-hmm. And, um, what, what does that look like for you interacting with him? And then what is, what was his ultimate, do you feel like response to you yeah, in that sure. as well? Um, I feel like when I, was mad. I just kept asking him like, what are you doing? Hmm. Like, why, why this? And I, and I, I was very aware that I was being like, why me? Or like, what, what, what are you doing to me? And I was mad, I think, because, you know, I thought that I was living life healthy. You know, I, I, I eat healthy foods. I take my vitamins. I exercise. I mm-hmm. do all the things we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it showed me like God's got other plans. You can do all these things, but mm-hmm. he, if he's got a plan for you, he's going to make it happen. And, um, and I, I think that I was just overwhelmed too by the timing We had had some other family members had passed away. My um, others in like not in good health. So I was like, really? Like right now, Lord? And I think that by that third day, he was just like, he gave me that peace. And I just knew like, like you're nothing I'm going to be able to do or say is going to change it. Mm -hmm. So 
I can just trust in him and know that um, he's been faithful to me and mm. that he's brought me through, you know, the death of a parent and some mm. other struggles in life. And why would he not bring me through that? Mm. So I think that that's why I was able to kind of transition so quickly. Sure. Um, because I knew what he had done already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so powerful, right? To remember and this is why, I mean, scripture is so important mm -hmm. and knowing the story of our forefathers and foremothers, yeah. you know, of um, their faithfulness. And it doesn't mean that the story always turns out great or that, um, you know, everything is easy or there aren't hard things to walk through because there certainly are. But we, we need those, we need something to root ourselves into um, this bigger narrative, this bigger story of seeing men and women who've lived lives of faith before us. Cause you get to some moments and it's like, you, I mean, sometimes we have enough and you, you already said like one of your gifts, spiritual gifts is faith. So maybe you do rise to that challenge sometimes, mm -hmm. but sometimes even if you have that gifting, it, it feels like too much. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, we have to root ourselves into the stories of others who've gone before us, who mm -hmm. God has shown himself to be faithful to throughout the ages. Um, so that, that was one thing that was sticking out to me. It, the other thing that was sticking out to me as you were sharing was, um, w when you come to God, some, sometimes people feel like they can't be authentic with him. Like they mm -hmm. can't actually be mad at him or they can't wrestle with him. Did you have any of those thoughts or feelings or, or are you just more like straightforward and like, listen, listen, God, listen you figure this him. out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I did. I felt like I had a hard time of, at first and I was like, you know, I really shouldn't be questioning him or asking him. But I, I at the same time, I thought like, I'm not going to he's not going to answer me and I'm not going to get these answers if I don't ask. Mm. If I don't ask him, why are you doing this to me? Mm. And he revealed that like, even if the outcome were have, would have been different or whatever it was going to be, I just said, okay, just use me then. Mm. However it needs to be done. If you're trying to get to someone else or trying to get me to speak your name into someone's life who needs it through this, mm. then just use me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, I mean, hard circumstance, but you come and you wrestle with God mm -hmm. about it. Um, turns out God can handle that. Turns out mm -hmm. we have in the Bible, Job wrestling with God, Jacob physically wrestling with God, mm -hmm. right? Like it's okay for us to air our grievances to God. He can handle these things. Yeah. He's not surprised by them. Um, but what ends up coming out of it is just really powerful and beautiful of like, you get to this place of, okay, I don't even necessarily have answers to these questions. I thought I did everything the right way. Mm -hmm. um, but you get to this point of maybe the word I would use is like submission of just like, mm -hmm. listen, God, here's, I, I don't even know what's going to happen. I can't control this outcome, right? Like we live in this world that's always trying to control outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, but you get to this, this place of submission or surrender with God. And then he ends up using you in powerful ways, like you already said, of ministering to other nurses or patients or people in your life where you just get to invite them, even in a hard, dark season where it feels like a lot of pain and brokenness and bad news, right? Like the opportunity is there is you get to invite people into God's love and his mm -hmm. presence and how he ministers to us in mm -hmm. that. Which I think is just, I mean, that's, that's a really great testimony and really cool. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for yeah. walking through that, um, mm -hmm. and sharing that with us. Um, that's, that's powerful, powerful stuff. I feel like that we need to, to be reminded of. So it's, and it's cool to hear how God's been at work in your life and it's mm -hmm. going to continue to, to be in, in your life, um, working and bringing about new, new mercies and new things. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Well, thanks for, for sharing that. I do want to transition here and talk mm -hmm. a little bit. So part of the podcast is us getting to know uh, you and your story and how God's been at work currently. Uh, but part of it is also celebrating some women in the past uh, that God has worked through. So today we're going to talk about Phoebe. Do you know anything about Phoebe? Uh, um, I know she was in 
the New Testament. There you go. That's, that's good. That's about it. That's good. Well, that's see, this is exactly why we have to do this series, because <laughs> we have all these incredible women that people don't know about. Yeah. So we got to we gotta have some space to talk about them. So Phoebe um, the, is, is a Bible name. Um, most people know Phoebe from, did you ever watch Friends oh, back in the day? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had some family friends. Um, their daughter was in my youth group, and they were huge Friends fans. And so their daughter's name was Phoebe, oh, which is which is fun. But you know, I mean, also could be named. I, w- I would go back and say, well, it was actually off of this Phoebe that we're going to talk about. <laughs> we don't know her last name, but uh, Phoebe is mentioned in Romans 16 verses one and two. It says this already. It says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Centria. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Okay, so this is kind of where we're introduced to to who Phoebe is. Um, Now, one of the things to know about the early church is that the church kind of goes from synagogues, right? Just Mm -hmm. kind of the structure that's happening in Judaism um, and temple. It goes from there into the households, into the early, the early church is happening in households, right? So you'll hear people talk about house churches Mm -hmm. and how that was how the church started. That's, that's 100% true. But what we know uh, during this time period is usually it's the women who are running the household. Um, Mm -hmm. The men are kind of out in the marketplace or in the public space or whatever it may be, but the the women are essentially running the business and the affairs and all of that stuff of the house, okay? And so Phoebe is a householder that there is a church happening um, where where she's at. So you have Phoebe, another one that we're not going to talk about in this podcast series is Nympha. You can read about her in Colossians 4.15. Um, but when we come across Phoebe, it, it is a little interesting because uh, she has no husband mentioned. And so what we don't know is if that means she's a widow. Uh, We don't know if she was single and never married. We don't know if it means that she's a believer, but her husband isn't. All we know is that either literally or figuratively, she's just addressed kind of as this single woman that Paul is talking about of of how to uh, receive her. But what doesn't really matter about her, it, her marital status is, isn't is really of concern, but it's just something to be aware of. But what we want to be aware of is how God has gifted her and how he's using her to advance the gospel of Jesus. So Romans tells us that that she um, comes from Centria, and what happens is many people believe that it's actually at her house that Paul would have written the book of Romans, mm-hmm. okay? And so... And she she has this, um, we're going to talk about this in a second, this unique relationship with the the book of Romans, which is which is pretty cool. So there's a there's a pretty good chance that this book of Romans is written at her house. And many would say this is maybe our most theological dense book, right? Have you ever have you ever read Romans interacted with it much? A little bit, but probably not read the whole. Yeah, thing it 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 takes it takes some work to mm-hmm. understand what's going on, right? Um, a little bit different than, uh, I mean, all the Bible takes a little bit of context and trying to understand what's happening here. But some things are a little little more accessible, right? You can read a parable by Jesus mm-hmm. or a narrative of what's happening in Jesus' life. That's usually a little easier to track with than than some of the things that's happening in some of the other books. But for sure, Romans is is one of our more dense theological documents. So we see in beginning of Romans, uh, Paul calls Phoebe a deacon, okay? Now, we again, lots of debate about what this word means and what it doesn't mean. Um, For sure, what it would mean is that she's participating in some of the ministry of that church. She's likely visiting the sick, the poor, maybe people in prison, um, helping administer funds and providing financial oversight, like doing doing some of those things would be pretty much a guarantee that that, that is happening. Also means she's likely um, teaching God's word, right? Like showing people how to interact with these letters that are being sent out in the Old Testament and all of those sorts of things. Um, so she's, she's this householder of the church, that she's the one where people are coming and meeting. She's organizing people. Um, She's called a deacon by Paul. But here's maybe the most incredible thing about her. Um, It's pretty commonly held, again, 
I always give this caveat, you can find someone who debates almost everything in scripture, mm-hmm. but uh, it's pretty commonly held that uh, because we think that Paul even maybe wrote this book at her house, um, that she is actually the carrier of the book of Romans uh, to Rome. And so what we know about the carrier of these books is they actually had huge responsibilities, okay? So not only were they transporting these these letters is really what they are, uh, but what their job was, was to sit with the author, to understand the author's intent, to hear what the author is saying and means by things. And then they are to go and basically present this letter, like read it, but it's kind of more... Um, with emphasis added and and all this sort of stuff. Um, so so they would go and they would give this uh, read this letter to the congregation to the recipients that it was for, and then it was their job to be able to answer questions about it. Right. Mm-hmm. So so Phoebe's literally the one carrying the book of Romans, who's responsible to answer this church, and we think there's probably up to about six local congregations that she would have been kind of traveling around to. So she, there's, there's a good chance, you know, five, six, whatever amount of times that she's standing in front of the church, reading this letter. And then as the church has questions or wants to clarify things, they would, you know, kind of raise their hand and say, hey, well, can, can you explain this? Can you talk about this? It was her job to be able to kind of speak with Paul's voice of like, mm-hmm. well, this is what this means. And so it's really cool because uh, she carries this really important book uh, that we still wrestle with 2,000 years later. Uh, she's responsible for reading this book. She's mm-hmm. responsible for explaining it. So some will even say, um, in, in some senses, she's the first commentator. You know, like we have mm-hmm. uh, commentaries on all of the books of the Bible. You can, you know, go order a bunch of different ones. In, in many senses, she's the first commentator on the book of Romans. She's the one who's you know, trying to provide clarity, or if they have a question, you know, maybe coming up with illustrations or, well, it'd be kind of like this, or if you, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe she's talking about her family situation or this moment she walked through. Well, I I think it's this, I think it's that, you know? And so all of that to say, um, she's, she's like a rock star, right? Like she's Mm -hmm. really important in understanding our history of women who have had a huge impact in the kingdom, in the local church. I mean, we, this is this is the spreading of the church moving into the Gentiles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so in, in many senses, all of us have to pay some sort of uh, tribute back to the role that she plays, because Paul's the one who's bringing the gospel to the Gentiles mm-hmm. that, you know, now travels to us 2,000 years later that, that we get to participate in. So anyways, I, I love her. She's yeah. awesome, uh, plays a, a huge role in the kingdom of God, um, and and you know, has had significant impact on, on, um, Christians for sure back then, but then also, uh, we're kind of benefactors, recipients of, mm-hmm. of what she did 2000 years ago. So, all right. So that's kind of a, a rundown of who, of who Phoebe is. Any, anything stick out to you? Anything you found interesting, curious? Um, I found it very interesting that, and I know this wasn't about like all of who she was, but how she wasn't married or had a husband um, or she was alone, but she was still able to like fill that role. Yeah. Like that didn't kind of like discount her any at all. Like she was still given like the honor to be able to help run a house church. Yeah. Um, Cause I, um, I think that, you know, maybe she could feel discouraged if she didn't have like a marriage to kind of speak into other people's lives about it. Um, But I felt like that that's very powerful in itself. And um, that role, it sounds very um, like that would be very honored to to have that role, you know, and it speaks a lot about she's got Paul's um, letter that she gets to take and you know, that's a man's perspective too. But, you know, when she goes and she gets to read it and maybe she has a little bit of her own perspective being a woman too, that's a different side too, um, can kind of speak into a little bit more that someone might need to hear. Sure. So, yeah. Like and that's that. one of the, you know, the, the first part of that of, of her, again, we don't know, she could have been married, could have been a widow, could have, yeah. you know, we, we yeah. don't, we just don't know. Um, but for sure, what we know about the early church is part of the reason it explodes. So we mm-hmm. go from the small group of people after Jesus is crucified, hanging out in this upper room, who's like, okay, now what? Like they're mm-hmm. going to start coming and hunting us down sort of a thing. Yeah. 
uh, to becoming it just 300 years later is the predominant religion in all of Rome. What we know is part of that happens because um, the gospel is available to all mm -hmm. and it doesn't just go through um, those with status or even specifically through males, but they were inviting mm -hmm. females, they were inviting singles and they were going around and um, I mean, kind of a brutal part of human history is because of how the ancient world worked, you oftentimes really wanted a boy to be able to, um, you know, continue to work the land or mm -hmm. to have status to pass on the family inheritance, all these different things. Um, and so they would, they would actually abandon babies back in the day if they were a lot of times if there was any concern that they weren't going to be fully uh, developed or if there was if they were sometimes just girls and so what the early church does is they go around and they're like no every human has dignity every mm -hmm. human is created in the image of god yeah. and so you are welcome and you are given status and you have importance and you have a role here to play and so that happens in all sorts of it but even as you were saying you know kind of with phoebe here of like mm -hmm. it, her marital status her her any anything about her other than the fact that she is called a child of god is all secondary and she mm -hmm. has a role to play within yeah. his kingdom which is powerful and it's true for all of us today as well that we all carry the image of god and we all um can can continue to share the good news and whatever gifts and talents he's he's given us so yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. Well, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, it's good, good to talk with you. I also want to say thank you to all of you joining us uh, on the podcast on YouTube. Uh, thanks for being here for another edition, and we will see you next week. 